Every year on February 21, people around the world celebrate International Mother Language Day to encourage linguistic and cultural diversity, diversity as well as multilingualism. It all started with Bangladesh efforts with the overarching goal of preserving and safeguarding its native languages. According to some estimates, 2,000 out of the 6,700 languages spoken worldwide are spoken in India alone. Wow. <laughs> this is quite enlightening news because... I think mother, the mother tongue is actually very important. And in Nigeria these days, you don't find a lot of people speaking their mother tongue. So on that note, I'm going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, can you speak your mother tongue? She's already giving me side eye. Um, <laughs> no, I can't. Oh, but I can say a few things. You can say a few things. Okay, so t tell us something. Um, I'm Delta Urubo, so mm. Miguel. Mm. And okay. then the response is Vrindo. Miguel means welcome, good morning, all of that. Yeah. Nice. Not bad, not bad. NG, <laughs> I don't want to ask you if you can. I'm sure that you can. <laughs> so will you just say something for us in your mother tongue? Um, I would say, Ndei Wondibani, Ahambo, Mwajiago, Mero, Dalo. Ah, nice. Nice. I somehow understand okay. what that means. Ahambo. <laughs> NG. Sorry, I don't know why I keep calling her Angie. Norma. <laughs> Norma, are you there? Okay, well, my dad is Igbo, but my mom is from from Aquaibom. So if I was going to say something, I mean, you said something Igbo, right? I'll just say something Aquaibom, and it's just very simple. Abadi, Abadi means how are you? I need your comments. Not bad. I'm good. I'm okay. So, yeah. Norma, so I was saying, can you say something for us in your mother tongue? Okay, so uh, Angie, what did you find for us in the news today? Um, well, my news story for today is an interesting video I found online. So uh, a video surfaced online on Tuesday that showed a very dramatic act in front of uh, an access bank. Mm. Um, I don't know if we have that video. So it's you would have to watch the video. So <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's okay, we have the video. Let's just put it up. So it's a video of the woman climbing to find her way into so access. Obviously, um, lately in front of the banks, there has been a lot of crowd queue waiting for the ATMs, waiting to go into the banking hall to try and get mm. cash. And I'm just imagining this woman because for me, she's my <laughs> hero of the day. And she decides she doesn't care about her age. Mm. She doesn't care about what she's wearing. She doesn't care about where she is. She decides on her own to go on this quest of turning the front bars in front of the bank into a climbing, mountain <laughs> climbing boy, <laughs> stepping stone. And she did that whole act and ended up in, right in front of the bank. And for me, that was a goal for the day. Mm. Because for her, I'm sure she, she was at the back of the queue and imagined herself how, she was, how long she would have to wait mm. in order to get any access into the bank or the ATM. And she just imagined, you know what, I'm not going to care about if someone is going to look under my, <laughs> under my skirt. I don't care how old I am. I don't care if my kids ever see this. They will know I was doing this for them. And she just went head on. And I, I applaud her bravery. <laughs> and yes, by the time you, if we do, if we do get to show the video, mm. you would understand what I mean. So it's just also, you know, bringing back to home what people are going through with the current situation of um, the uh, redesign of the Naira notes and how it's affecting people on a daily <coughs> basis and making people act out of character. I mean, I was going to say, as much as that video is funny, I mean, it's just our honest reality as it is. It's, it just feels like it's now survival of the fittest. You yes. really just have to go through it to be able to survive in this country right now. All that laying back. And I hope that we can channel this same energy on Saturday when we go out to you know, put out our votes 
for um, the presidential and um, House of Representatives elections. Mary, what do you find for us in the news today? Um, on my end, I have, since I'm in support of the cashier society, uh -huh. <laughs> there's a bus conductor who has been seen using a POS machine, you know, for mm -hmm. to collect his change and money. So I guess I, I, I foresee a future where a lot of people are going to have to you know, use the POS and I guess it's commendable as well, you yeah. know, because we're trying to find a way out of it. We're in this mess, mm. but we're trying to look at the positive and say, hey, you know what? People don't have cash. We have to help ourselves and let's see how this goes. Yeah. So it was very interesting to find that. I mean, when I saw that, I was like, of course, Miri would definitely support this because <laughs> this is what she has been preaching for, for a long time yeah. now. <laughs> she has been saying, let us, Long let way us, to technology. Let us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Norma, what did you find for us in the news today? In the desperate times, all from desperate measures. True. True. And in the spirit of that, I found in the news that the UK, uh, that... <laughs> the UK is advising Nigerians to calm tensions and prevent electoral violence. So the UK Minister of State for Development and Africa, Andrew Michel, has advised in his statement uh, to Nigerians that they should remain calm and that the UK government is remains committed to supporting credible and inclusive elections. And um, it's interesting because it's coming at such a time when we are about to engage in our elections this Saturday to be precise. So the UK government is saying that they are in support of what is going on, but that more emphasis should be on calming tensions. With the rising tensions in Nigeria, it seems like violence is becoming the order of the day. And uh, the UK government is also saying that they are fully behind. They are watching the scenes. They are watching the details of these elections. And um, in the spirit of support to Nigeria, that whatever, whoever is found, uh, continue to promote violence will actually be sanctioned. I mean, sanctions can be brought against you and um, they, would, they can go as far as denying visas to Nigerians who are promoting violence. So in general, it is that pe people should respect electoral laws and um, the institutions and also respect human rights in the process of exercising their civil rights as well. Avoid hate speech and just generally be out for peace. So that's, um, that's what I found interesting in the news today. So I guess the word is enough for the wise, like they say. And I mean, this is something I already talked about in the introduction. The Labour Party uh, supporter that had to be amputated today after he was attacked during the presidential rally, the Labour Party presidential rally, or Labour Party campaign rally, rather, in uh, Lagos last week. So a yet-to-be-identified supporter of the Labour Party in Lagos State has had his hand amputated, amputated after the attack that rocked the grand finale of the presidential campaign rally of the party in the state last week. The Director General of the OB Dati Presidential Campaign Council, Akin Oshuntoko, made, made this known today during a live appearance on Channel's television to 2023 verdicts. Oshuntoko said he did not have the assurance that everything is set for the presidential election slated for Saturday, saying that voter suppression through violence has remained a worrying factor. I mean, yes, there is this, which is why we're actually having this discussion today about voter sensitization, right? Um, it's sad to see that we're still going this route of attacking people that are supporting <coughs> whatever party it is. I mean, the other day we had that video of the attack at Aguida Market where they stabbed someone in the head yeah. and they said the lodger said, oh, this party, this market belongs to a certain party, so your party cannot come here to campaign. And that's just really sad, you know? I don't understand why we still, after all these years, we've seen that violence really doesn't solve anything. Yes, this is still where we are. But I think we've just come to that point where it is, everybody just hide your head at this point and try as much as possible to stay safe. And then that is why we're having this conversation today anyway. So yeah, see you after the break.